Moving on from that one, I want to talk about this. So as most of you guys would know, um, you know, Kendrick and Drake are going through a bit of a situation at the moment because Kendrick decided to light up Drake in uh, the track that features on the future Metro Boomin' new album um, called Like That. And ever since then, we've all been waiting on tender hooks for Drake to reply. So far, nothing. So in the midst of that conversation in the midst of everybody you know replaying that fucking disc record and loving the production and listening to the samples and thinking about all the times that drake has gone after other people and just kind of you know the the current discourse at the moment is who you think is going to win um rick ross has now kind of you know decided to throw his hat in the ring and be a part of the whole like anti-drake thing um you know nav unfollowed drake all this sort of stuff is happening in the background and obviously recently the most recent update has been that Drake was meant to have a feature on BFB the Pac-Man's new album, but the feature got, you know, um, didn't get approved because allegedly he's kind of putting all his efforts into dropping some sort of single that's meant to be destroying Kendrick. So with that being said, everyone's kind of talking about beef, talking about hip hop, talking about music and shit. And I guess for some reason, my guy Kanye felt a little bit excluded. He felt a little bit left out of the conversation. So out of nowhere, big up Yeezy updates he decided to post this on Instagram story everyone knows I was Kendrick and no, on no on no more parties in LA everyone knows I was Drake at the free Hoover concert everyone knows I brought Adidas into the culture and I took them out everyone knows Lotta Volkova the former stylist of um, Vetemar and Balenciaga Demna the creative director of Balenciaga and Vetemar founder Virgil Abloh Je um, obviously you know Virgil Abloh is um, Jerry I'm assuming he means Jerry from Fear of God and Kim and Kim, I'm assuming he means Kim Jones, maybe, from fucking um, Dior. I'm not too sure. Um, all worked for me. I made Yeezus, Dark Fantasy, Pablo, Graduation, Throne, 808s. I made Runaway, Devil in a New Dress, Father Stretch My Hand. I'm the only person to come back to number one after cancellation. There's only one go. I stand with me. My friends call me yay. Smiley face. As true as this whole thing is, as correct as he is with every fucking single line, especially this part here, because I think a lot of people don't really talk about this much, but that free Larry Hoover concert where Drake and Ye, you know, for a very brief time decided to kind of make amends, Ye was incredible. He performed incredibly well. It almost felt like he was trying to remind Drake of the levels when it comes to performing because he was he put on an amazing show and you clearly saw the difference in terms of the levels of performance when it comes to putting on a live show so I'm glad he kind of mentioned that free Larry Hoover concert and how great he was when he did it as much as I love Ye as much as I'm a Ye apologist as much as I love everything that he does this also feels a little bit like a little bit babyish a little bit complainish a little bit a little bit of like oh there's no attention on me i don't feel like people are paying attention on, about me or my album anymore um whatever i'm not in a current conversation i want to be a part of it so let me include myself into it by just jumping in and saying any sort of nonsense because no one's really been talking about him and the funny thing about this is that he wants to have it all and i think most artists are like that most artists are quite greedy or quite selfish because the truth of the matter is, Ye is a much better artist than Drake, than Kendrick and J. Cole. He's probably a better artist than all three of them combined. They could never do what he does. But unfortunately, as a quote-unquote rapper, he can't touch none of these guys, ever. It's never going to happen. Back-to-back -back this record, he'd lose all the time. Um, you know, Kendrick, sorry, Ye's strength isn't in bars. It's mostly in artistry, being able to say things on records, being able to construct certain songs, you know, elicit certain emotions, tell certain stories. But his strength isn't in lyricism. It's never has been, especially nowadays where he hasn't really got the writers he used to in the past when he wasn't doing it. Because I feel like Ye lost a lot of the great writers he was kind of with maybe the Ryan Fest and a few other people who were basically helping to ghostwrite for him when he did the whole, the whole anti-Semitic thing when he started to become a Trump apologist people kind of fell off and kind of stopped supporting him and helping him out so I think nowadays my personal opinion again being a yay fanboy I think nowadays you are getting a far better or far more true representation of yay's lyrical ability now because he doesn't have as much help as he is in the past so if that's the case and you know a lot of people have said some of the bars in Vultures aren't the greatest. Some people have, you know, even questioned the bars on Donda, um, whatever it may be. For him to come out here and, and basically throw his hat in the ring in a conversation is silly. Because if Drake is going to struggle against Kendrick, how would fucking Ye do against Kendrick? 
I think Kendrick would fucking destroy him. So I don't think that's a smart decision. I think it just feels like he feels like he's a bit, you know, not included in the conversation. He wanted to get himself included. He started screaming about it. And now here we are. Ye is reminding everybody that he's the most important person in culture. The only one people should care about. It's fucking hilarious. You got to love Ye. You have to love Ye, but he has to chill out. He has to bloody, bloody chill out. And again, what do I know? What do I bloody know? Absolutely nothing. 